What are we supposed to make of the dreaded HC? That's portfolio managers speak for healthcare, the healthcare space, especially since the managed care providers have been hammered in recent months while the rest of the markets were higher. I can't believe these stocks are vulnerable. Most of the Democrats running for president are either campaigning on some form of Medicare for all or at least talking about serious cost controls. And that's a real risk for the managed care uh, cohort. The president's not a friend either. Or is he? We need to put this risk in context. Sure as possible, if the Democrat nominee, uh, someone pretty left wing, that wins and they sweep the Senate and then they have the political will to go ahead and do something that maybe we could have a single payer system. But is it likely? Oh, that's a lot of ifs. In the meantime, many of these companies are doing incredibly well. Earlier this week, we heard from Centene, a health plan provider for government sponsored programs like Medicare, Medicaid, and the Obamacare exchanges. And they're in fabulous shape. Centene reported a bountiful five cent earnings beat. Uh, it was off a dollar 34 basis, much higher than expected revenue. Management raised their full year forecast. It was a classic beat and raise quarter. Yet at this point, the stock sells from really 10 times next year's earnings estimates. Even with the newfound political risk here, I think Centene's way too cheap, especially since they got a major catalyst here in the form of a $15 billion well care acquisition. So brilliant. Clearly, the company believes this business as a future, or else they wouldn't be doubling down on it. Do not take it from me. Let's check in with someone who's sane, who understands the way this business works. Let's check in with Michael Neidorf. He's the chairman and CEO of Centene. To learn more about the quarter, where his company's headed, Mr. Honor, welcome back to Mayhem Money. Good to see you, Michael. How are you? Wonderful to see you. I am so glad that you could be on the show because we've got to talk about something that was actually talked about today in this stock picker contest. Right. Uh, both Guy and Dami used terrific and We both said, it's ridiculous. Enough is enough. Companies that do a great job in the healthcare space, like United Health, like you, are being pummeled as if that we're back in a period where the ta- both houses are run, run by Democrats and we have a president who hates the healthcare world. That's not the world we're in now. No. Actually, if you, if you think about it, the general population is happy with what we have. You know, the ACA, it's working. Every year, we seem to renew 80% of what we had the year before. We, we have 2 million people. They love it. They're staying in with it. They're staying longer. It's working. People don't want to accept it. They want to change. What they're talking about, I don't think, works. Well, uh, we heard today Joe Biden, obviously yeah. he could be front runner instantly. He was saying that he thinks that uh, he wants to defend and build on the ACA. No explicit mention of Medicare for all. But I think more important, he's talking about uh, health insurance as a right, not health care as a right. Those are two very different things, aren't they? Yes. You know, everybody needs to have access to health care. And I think people need to have access to affordable health care. I heard your opening comments, you talk about costs. We work hard on costs, but we also subscribe to the fact that the highest quality is the, lo- is the lowest cost. You, if you do it right the first time, you have the right provider network, it works. And we're, we're proving it every day. All right, so now you've made this big acquisition. Obviously, if you <clears> felt <throat> that the, uh, this segment was going, I know you're, you run a healthcare company, but I know you look at the stock market. If you thought it was going to be as bad as uh, when Obama was elected, then obviously you're paying too much. You're clearly making a statement that it's probably already been too punished, and this is an opportun- opportunistic moment. I think it's punished. I think, the, you know, in our case, we put two good companies together. Right. Okay? And there's a good strategic rationale for what we're doing and why we're doing it. And I'm at the point now that, yeah, I look at the stock price. I want our, our shareholders to do well. I want to continue the growth. We have a lot of very successful shareholders, and we've tried to do a good job for it. But it's at a point now, it's macro. It's not us. It's people reacting and worried about what they're hearing and, not, and, and thinking, not thinking about can it be implemented. Is it realistic? Well, why don't they listen? For instance, uh, Chuck Schumer, my senator, not in favor of a, a Medicare for all. Nancy Pelosi, powerful speaker, certainly not in favor. Mm. Well, these people are not voted out of office in 2020. Nothing's making sense to me. Just tell me how come fear spreads. You speak to big accounts. People, in, in, people hear a politician say something. And I said, you know, I, the, real, the opportunity, well, what happened? And they say, well, we've seen things back in 16 and other times we thought could not happen, and it right. did. Right. So there's an overreaction to what they hear. Now, I have seen in other press outlets that you may have to make some divestitures. Uh, who determines that? And is it possible that you may lose some of the markets that you really want to be in? No, I, we're not going to lose any markets. You're not. We're going we're to gain markets. We're Tell picking me. up uh, Michigan. We're picking up uh, Kentucky. We're going to be adding some of our products to those new markets. So that's all good. 
There are, and we focus on public policy. Right. I believe in sound public policy. They want individuals to have choice. There are some states where there's three plans, and we're two of the three, well care and Centene. So when you look at that, it says, yes, they probably make sense right. for them. But other states I, where we have a, a large share, I, I think they're starting to understand that critical mass helps us to be more successful, take on risk on a balanced mm -hmm. basis, and I think it's going to work out very well for everybody. All right. Uh, you have impressed me over the years as someone who is really out for the consumer to get the best health care. What do you say to the person, and we know some of them ourselves, and we talk about it, who 25% of their income is spent on, on health care right now? What do you do? I think that's unacceptable. I think it's unacceptable with the, to the number of people that are below the federal poverty level. I think it's unacceptable that individuals are making a wage that they can't live on. So we have to think about these things from a social standpoint. And it doesn't mean that you have to redistribute a lot of wealth, but you have to do some things that we're doing at Centene. We're talking about what should the minimum wage be? You know, things of that nature. How do we ensure that employees have affordable care? But you have to educate them. You have to help them understand how it works, how to access care. And you can do it. Is the industry doing enough? I know you are, but you know there's some very big players. They seem they come across as being companies that are a little bit more heartless than maybe they are. Is the industry doing enough to try to encourage lower prices? I won't go into a lot of details out of fairness, everybody, and confidentiality. But there are a small group of us, large companies, because we're now fortunate to be in a large right. sector, that are working together to try and help people understand how to access care, what makes up for quality care, and what we're contributing to better health care. All right, well, that's all we can ask for, because you know it is a crisis, right. and it's not being addressed correctly, in my eyes, yeah, or in yours. We, I just want to, I have to say, my biggest pension right now is to get us back to policy and away from politics. Perfect. That's what we need to do. That's my, you know, I don't talk about politics. This is something near and dear to me because of the reasons I talked about with Michael. I want to thank Michael Nidorf, Chairman and CEO of Centene Corporation, who's trying to get health insurance for right. all. Mad Money's back in. Right. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.